Hey, we're back with you with another video on a 2010 Citation Mustang that we have for sale. We're going to take it on a, a quick flight over to Henderson, take you along for the ride. Okay, push the start button, bring the right engine power lever out of the cutoff, and I'm watching. Got N1 or N2, light off, fuel flow, oil pressure, and N1. Okay, that's a good start. And then we bring the operating engine up. I just put like a finger width between it for a cross generator start. Okay, so left engine, start, power lever up across the gate, N2, oil pressure, we get N1 much faster on that second engine. Okay, that start cycle is complete. It's a good start. My oxygen. Start working off some of these. Uh, avionics is going to take care of a bunch of those. So here we have some uh, payload information. Empty weight of the airplane. A couple of people on board. No passengers. We don't really have any cargo. I sink the fuel. Bring that into the, the length available. So our takeoff weight's 8350, and that'll be important for us when we're getting our uh, speeds. So we have our clearance, and so I'm going to go to the flight plan. And uh, this is the non NXI G1000. So I know what we're going to do first is our departure procedure. So I'm going to hit the procedure key, select the departure. It's the Zoom 3, so I'll select the Zoom 3 off of 3-0, and it's Mizen. Select Mizen, that looks good, and we load that, and that automatically populates all the, uh, all the fixes associated with that. Let me go down to the last spot, and I go back to my flights got cleared as filed. So after Mizen, we're doing the Nintendo one. So here I'll enter in A H N D is the airport. And I'll hit the procedure key and we'll select the arrival. Go to the Nintendo one. And Mizen is the first fix on that, so that joins them up load that. Now what I always do is kind of scroll out on these things. So there's our runway heading off 30 to 1500 then a left turn heading uh, 180 is the uh, zoom and that's expect radar vectors to A Hill which I believe is here. And you go to zoom rest of those fixes out to Mizen. And you got the Mizen arrival, the Nintendo arrival into Henderson. So that all makes sense. Again, this is non-NXI, so you can see the redraw rate on the screen is a lot, a lot slower. Okay, next is uh, back to my clearance and uh, 3,000 I've got in the altitude selector because it's climbed via 4705s in the uh, transponder. I got 12535 in the standby, and I've got tower in number one. We're on number two. Uh, departure procedures are, are fairly straightforward uh, in the airplane, and, and on both of these, there are nav, so we can fly them 
in the nav mode and it'll hit all the all the points for us uh, using GPS, which is really nice. Um, but you got to monitor it. You got to make sure all the fixes are correct. You know, often there's speeds that comply with on some of these departures and arrivals. And uh, so while it's simple, you also have to put the time in to familiarize yourself with these procedures because they expect you to stay right on top of them. Another thing on, on this departure, we're going to le level off below the Bravo. And there's a 200 knot speed limit, so it's another thing you got to think about in the jet. Okay, power's coming up. All oh, looks good so far. Take off D10. They're green. Everything looks green to me. Airspeed's alive. Seventy knots, cross check. Positive rate. You're up. One twenty flaps up. Traffic, traffic, traffic. My power. Got the amper. Citation 4 Sierra Bravo, contact SoCal departures later. See ya, 4 Sierra Bravo. 700 feet is our minimum altitude for autopilot, that comes on. And Filch. At Tower Post, 998, uh, we're up with you. Archer. 94 Sierra Bravo is out of uh, 1,200. Could be going to 180, there it is. 94 Sierra Bravo is passing 1,700 for 3,000. I have four Sierra Bravo, took a departure to contact, climb maintain 7,000. Climb and maintain 7,000, 8 Sierra Bravo. Southwest 2210, descend and maintain 1,600. 1,600, Southwest 2210. One thing to notice, this happens frequently, is uh, the autopilot started to level off at 3, and I dialed a higher altitude, so it went out of filch and climbing on an airspeed, and it went into pitch mode. Essentially, kind of got confused there, so I need to go back to filter mode. Select 170 knots. So now we've turned on the 180. Again, it's a heading leg. And you can see on here, it's kind of a heading to nowhere. The uh, archer procedure is to expect vectors on course. That's what we're going to expect next. Now we're going to be entering the Bravo and we can get about our speed on that. level off. Get that. I think here, Bravo. Turn left, direct K Hill. Maintain 1 1000. Left turn, direct K Hill. Maintain 1 1000. 94 Sierra Bravo. Come down here on the Bay Hill, direct. 252200 descending via. And yeah, back to nav mode. 2522 SoCal, thanks for golfing. Spectrum 830. 30 Southwest 2522. Report Sierra Bravo, climb 18 knots or less. 17,000, 250 knots or less. 94 Sierra Bravo. Alexander traffic in place. Okay, so we're climbing out of. Uh, we're almost leveling at 270, which is going to be our final altitude at this uh, on this short trip from Long Beach to Henderson. And uh, I've done a lot of uh, videos on the Mustang. It's an airplane we deal with a lot. We uh, we train in them. We uh, we acquire them for customers. We sell them. We do maintenance. Got a lot of maintenance experience with these airplanes now. And uh, Cessna came out with this airplane in the early 2000s. I think they certified it and started delivering it in 2006. I built close to 500 
over the years, stopped producing them, I think, in 2016. And, you know, I don't know if anybody knows exactly why, except the people that actually made the decision, but uh, the M2 came out, and uh, they were kind of competing, I think, mostly the Mustangs with used ones, and they just didn't see the future and the volume, and they can bring the, the CJ1 Plus back as the M2, and they put the focus on that one, so they discontinued the Mustang, but it's a great airplane. I don't think you can point to the discontinuation of manufacturing because it wasn't a good airplane. And to this day, I've said it many times in these videos that I think it's the best value uh, you can get in the market. I'm not exactly sure why the prices are where they are. I would think they'd be a little bit higher. Uh, but um, it's just done really well in the market. The market's good right now across the board, as I've also said many times. And there's only like six or seven Mustangs for the entire world on controller.com. And so very limited supply. And the prices are, you know, they're up, but they're not, they're not way off the charts. Um, and it's just all around for, from our perspective, it's a very simple, straightforward uh, airplane to fly. If you're transitioning into your first jet, it's a, there's an, my opinion, there's no better airplane to transition into. Simple G1000 avionics, FADEC motors, um, goes to 41,000 feet, respectable cruise speed, really easy on the fuel burn, and a very forgiving uh, airplane to, to fly and to really learn high performance, high altitude jet flying in. So for that reason, you know, we think the Mustang's a great airplane. And when you factor in the cost of operating it too. It's, it's really low and I think it, it rivals, if not, you know, beats some of the turbo props in terms of annual maintenance costs. So we really like Mustangs. I really personally like Mustangs a lot. I think they're just great airplanes. Great airplane to, uh, to get. 240 for 984 Sierra Bravo. Uh, Performance, I believe, is solid and consistent with Cessna putting on it. Uh, like I said, it goes to 41,000 feet. You're not going to get 340 knots out of it, 41, but you know, 330 on 80 gallons of fuel per hour, both engines, and uh, you know, bump a thousand miles. You're going to have an 8,000, close to an 8,000 foot cabin at that altitude. And uh, it's not, you know, it's not typical jet performance. I mean, it's a jet, it's, it's not what people would consider fast, but it does really well. And for the, the missions that it, this class airplane uh, makes on a routine basis, the slower speed is not going to equate to huge savings in minutes on a typical three to 500 nautical mile trip that these airplanes fly. So, you know, people might kind of give this airplane a hard time about how slow it is or how it doesn't, it's not that fast, but if you equate that to minutes saved over a 400 knot airplane on a 300 nautical mile trip, it's, it's minimal. So, uh, you know, the performance on the airplane, in my opinion, does, it serves the market well that it, that, you know, that, it, that it's in. This airplane is a uh, 2010 serial number 283. Uh, it's got a little over 4,000 hours on it. Um, the uh, engines were overhauled at 3,500 hours. So that makes it, uh, you know, 500 hours on the engines. Fully funded uh, Power Advantage Plus engine programs, and really good condition. I mean, this interior is original. And it's in great condition. Uh, the, the paint and the boots are in really good condition. And so, you know, if I walked into this airplane and didn't know how much time I was on it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't assume it has 4,000 hours. Which, uh, you know, for the typical owner-flown airplane, this airplane's 12 years old. So if it had, uh, you know, 150 hours a year, it'd be close to 2,000 hours. And so. Uh, uh, a little more time than we normally see on Mustangs, but 
I don't see any real indication of it in terms of condition. It was on a really good maintenance history, no damage, good logs. So it's a really, a really nice airplane. It does not have the NXI upgrade, but easily done and it's the same. Everybody pays the same price for uh, NXI. I think you know, sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars for NXI upgrade, depending on which which options you get. And uh, so, you know, real real good uh, airplane, and there aren't many available. We have not priced this airplane yet, so uh, at, at the time we made the video, so you'll have to uh, check it out on controller or email us at sales at ocraviation.com. We'll we'll have a spec sheet ready by the time the video hits and be able to get pricing information to you. We're not doing this on purpose, it's just we haven't priced it yet. So uh, normally in all our ads and all of our airplanes, we try to put prices on everything so you don't have to call us for, for pricing. Okay, we're going to start descending into Henderson. I hope you enjoyed the video on this airplane. Uh, and if you have any other questions about it, you can contact uh, sales at ocraviation.com. Give me a call, leave a comment. We'll get you a spec sheet on it. And uh, we'll be doing some more videos on Mustangs, maintenance, training, uh, some things we see with people that are transitioning to these airplanes that that are unique to the Mustang, and we'll we'll try to you know do almost a series of, of videos on this airplane. So anyway, thanks for watching.